My mortal enemy, Kenji, challenged me to see if I could analyze his data better than he could. I want to find out if you Avery. can analyze my data better than I can. For the first time ever, I'm creating a community project on Kaggle. I thought it'd be fun to publish some real data, my own YouTube data in fact, and see what everyone comes up with. Challenge accepted. And spoiler alert, I created the world's best project for Kenji. I built this awesome Tableau public dashboard that basically shows all of his YouTube stats on one page, but let me show you how I actually made it. So I started by going where Kenji had his data, which is on Kaggle.com. I've used Kaggle quite a bit in this series. Hopefully you're familiar with Kaggle. Basically, he gave us some context up here. He's been trying to make good data science videos since November of 2017. And he wants to basically give the community a project, help everyone understand the growth of my YouTube community and think about it, ways it can be improved. So here's some of the things that he was looking for. What are the themes of the comment data? What type of video titles and thumbnails drive the most traffic? Who is his core audience and what are they interested in? What types of videos lead to most growth? What types of content are people engaging with or, engage, or watching the longest? Advanced projects could be creating a chat bot to respond to common comments when like basically it's a common question, pulling sentiment from thumbnails and titles and comparing that with performance, data I'd like to add over time, video descriptions, video subtitles, actual video data. So there's basically four types of files that he's giving us. Um, he got this via the YouTube API. There's the aggregated metrics by video, aggregated metrics by video and with country and subscriber status video performance all time in all comments, okay? Basically, we have all four of those uh, right here in the bottom. You can go ahead and select all the columns in Kaggle to basically get a quick preview of what the data looks like. The first data set we're going to use is the aggregated metrics by country and subscriber status. Sorry, mouthful there. We showed all 15 columns. This basically has multiple video titles. So you see here's a video title. Here's the external video ID video length, so these are all going to be the same. Thumbnail length going to be the same. And then we get into the country codes. This is by country. So here's the country code. Um, is subscribed, that's interesting. That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because then we have count per view. So this is how many views they're getting inside of that country, how many likes were added from there, how many dislikes were added from there, uh, subs user subscribed from there, unsubscribed from there the amount that they watch, like the average percentage that they watch, the average watch time, and the number of comments that came from that country. So that's the first data set we're going to be using. So once again, basically each row is a combination of a certain title in a certain country. The next one is going to be aggregated metrics by video, and that's going to be just one row per video. Notice that this video ID is the same as the others. That's how we can join these two tables. We'll have the title, the day was published, the number of comments added, the number of shares, wow, that is a lot of shares. Um, number of dislikes, the number of likes, the subscribers lost, the subscribers gained, and then the estimated revenue, basically. Um, so how many rev how much revenue per 1,000 views is he getting? Open up Tableau Public and import them. I've already imported these two files, obviously, but if not, you can go to data, new data source, and since both of these are downloaded from Kaggle, right? Right here, you can just hit download. That downloads them as CSVs. You can just go ahead and upload as CSVs. That's just a text file, basically, and choose whatever CSV that you're interested in. Now, how did I make this dashboard? Well, you'll notice that in the top left corner, we have the YouTube logo. That is just a uh, transparent logo that is used via the image down here. Let's see, image, right? And you can resize it. And this is just an image of Ken that you can resize, basically. I stole that from his YouTube channel, I think. Then this is actually a giant text that says Ken G's YouTube dashboard. I use spaces to move stuff to the right. Uh, basically, you see that just moved to the right. Um, and I made the background black, so it has all of this uh, kind of like this black theme to the background. I think I just clicked on this right here to, to do so. Um, or maybe it was somewhere over here. Can't remember. Okay, then I have the total views, the views, the estimated revenue, the watch time. These are all KPIs that I made in a very similar way. You, of course, need to click on create a new worksheet. This worksheet, for instance, if we're going to do total views, uh, which, which total vids, sorry, uh, that's the number of videos. So for example, you go here, you look at total videos, and to recreate what I did, open up a new worksheet, right? Take the video titles, put it inside the text. 
These are all the different video titles that Ken has done. And instead of showing the actual videos, you do the actual count here. And there's that v value of 223, right click on it, format, and you can change these like the size of all the text and the stuff basically inside of here to make it look like we did here. Put a black background, add the, the name, which is instead of sheet nine total vids. We do that for the estimated revenue, the watch hour time. Instead of using uh, count, we use the sum there. We use the sum for the estimated revenue. For views, we use sum as well, but that's all basically the same. Once you've made one, you can right click on it and you can hit duplicate and just change the numbers to however the fields you want it to be. So that's how you make this full top bar, picture, picture, text with the background, and then dragging these individual text things that are right here onto the page into the top right corner. Next, we just have a basic uh, time filter. This is pretty easy to add. This time filter is going to be based off of the dates and it's going to affect all the visualizations on the screen. So that if you wanna just look at like, for instance, the looks like the last six months of 2021, you can do so. Or if you want to look at the beginning of Ken's, you know, YouTube career, you can kind of see what's going on. So I really like this basic date filter. It just makes things a lot easier to zoom in and zoom out of certain, you know, uh, regimens of, of, of Ken's career. One of the things that Ken wanted us to look at was what gets clicked on. So I created this click through rate bar chart, which basically shows the, imp the uh, impression click through rate. Basically it means for every hundred people, that saw this, 11 people clicked on it, which might seem low, but that's actually a great uh, click-through rate, okay? So this is basically displaying all the different click-through rates and the title of the actual um, film. So what you see here is I have the click-through rate sum right here. It's basically just an average. In fact, we could change that to average and nothing would change. And we're adding the video title um, to the rows. It's not super important, I don't think. Let's just try taking it off. Hold on, let's see. Oh, it is important, <laughs> sorry. We definitely need that. That's what's making it go downward, okay? Then we're adding a annotation that is the video title, as well as we're coloring by the number of views. So basically if it's really red, like you'll see down here, that means it got a lot of views. So up here, even though this has a really high um, click-through rate, it has very low views, only 60 views, I guess, at this time. So it doesn't get viewed that much. So it's kind of interesting to see those how things are you know, click-through versus seen. Like this basically gives really interesting outliers. So like for instance, this didn't have very good click through rate, but it had a lot of views. Very interesting, right? Um, so other things that might stand out, lots of just normal stuff right here. Data certificate versus boot camp versus master's degree. How I learned data science if I had to start over. The best free data science course is no one's talking. It basically like just like makes things stand out, which I think is pretty interesting. And we slap that on our dashboard over here on the left-hand side so you could scroll. All right, does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Next, let's move over to the likes versus subscriber gained. This is a scatter plot, basically. So what I'm plotting here is just the subscribers gained from that video against the likes for that video. And one thing I did here was I actually made this a logarithmic, logar logarithmic, logarithmic, there we go, logarithmic uh, y-axis. So you can see that like it goes from 200 to 500 to 1,000 to 2,000. That's just because this is like such a big outlier. So when you have outliers, logs can often uh, help it make a little bit more sense. I think to not make it one, you somehow click over here, hit edit axes, and you're going, yeah, right here, logarithmic, turn it off. See, that just doesn't look as good as when you turn the logarithmic on. It just like lets you see things a little bit better. And uh, on the bottom down here, I don't think I have it as logarithmic. We could try clicking on it, edit axis, go to logarithmic here, and then you get more of like a scatter plot which is kind of interesting. Maybe we'll do that. Makes it like a little, little easier to see everything, basically. Um, but I don't know, maybe not, because I like to see those other two as outliers, because they really are outliers. Those are huge outliers that are, are interesting. So basically, we can see on this video right here, and by the way, I have the video title in the hover, how I learned data science, if I had to do it over again, got 46,000 subscribers, which is crazy. Um, I only got that many likes, too. Okay, it's 10,000 subscribers, the best data science courses nobody's talking about. Three data science proven projects for beginners. Got a lot of subscribers uh, gained as well. So this is just like a great way to try to like see how the effects of the video for Ken. I also made this subscribers over time graph, which basically shows his cumulative subscribers over the, the days and also when that video was posted. So you see this is the really big one that we talked about, right? Uh, wait, right here at the top. How I learned data science if I had to start over again, 97,000. Um, subscribers at the time. So we can go ahead and look at that graph. 
basically this is just going to be the sum in the change, right? Yeah, so it's the sum of the sum and the change of the subscribers. So that basically makes it running, right? And then we have the uh, video publish time as the uh, x-axis. And we also included the video title uh, inside of the hover so you can actually see what's going on as you hover above. And last, we have this watch rate video. Now this watch rate video is kind of complicated. Basically, it's the average percent viewed. So this means, you know, 100% people finish the video 100%. Uh, this would mean like the average was, 50, in this case, 36%. And the watch length, how many minutes the video actually is, is on the left-hand side. So if you multiply this times this, that would give you the total watch time for those particular videos. Now the size is in the change of subscribers. So this big red one is how I could learn data science if I had to start over again. But this is kind of interesting because it lets you see, oh wait, the size is that and the color is that as well, I believe, right? Both those are the same. So unless you just kind of find interesting big circles at different times and different spaces and try to think through, why did this video do well? What's special about this video? Did this title have an impact? Do the people like the topic? Just like basically a way to explore this data set a little bit more visually. So hopefully this video showed you, yes, I can analyze data better than Kenji. If you guys also wanna analyze data better than Kenji, I'll give you this entire dashboard that you could start with, have as a starting point and then build off of. All you need to do is click the link in the description down below that says basically get the code and the data and the resources for this project. And you'll also get it for 29 other projects because I am doing 30 data science projects in 30 days. This is day 21 or something like that. I've lost track of it all. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, hit subscribe. Bye.